All right, folks, welcome back to Krantz's Corner. We're finally off spring break. We're finally out of Disney World. Thank goodness for all that. I just told Perk all my stories about my kid. He's an adrenaline junkie. The only good thing about it is he likes the Mickey Mouse ice cream bars. So you know that daddy's happy about that one. After every single ride, you want an ice cream bar? Okay, let's go get an ice cream bar. Mommy, what are you doing? No, nothing. You go back over there. That's good to go. Anyways, let's bring on my guest, one of my favorite people I bring on, Krantz's Corner from the South Florida Sun Sentinel, Chris Perkins, joining us here. Welcome back to Krantz's Corner. Chris, how you doing? Hey, Zach, I'm doing great, man. It's, it's a beautiful time of year, right? The draft is right around the corner. We have the final four that's going to be coming up. The Marlins are going. Of course, they haven't won a game yet. Right, Panthers right. are going. The Heat are going. I mean, all the sports are going, baby. I love this time of year. Yeah, it is a great time of year. I know that, like, during, like, the sports radio period, this is – we're getting close to, like, that dead – you know, Perk right. knows. Perk's been in the sports radio business, too. When you get past kind of football in the draft and like the NBA playoffs are over, March Madness is done, hockey playoffs are over, then you have that dead period. But right before that, you have this period, which is right. unbelievable. It's great because we know, and Perk knows this too, football season, there is no off season. It's always right. something going on. But baseball is going on right now. you got the playoffs starting and all the other sports. And March Madness which is one of my favorite times of the year. It is a Dang. great time in sports. Look, Zach, I, 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 not to drive the show into a ditch, but I watched that LSU Iowa women's game last night. So oh my goodness, Caitlin right. Clark, oh, and Angel Reese. If if she wouldn't have gotten hurt, but what a what a great showcase for women's sports, women's basketball, and Caitlin Clark. My right. goodness, man, the range she has. My it's, goodness, it's unbelievable. And the funny thing is, is you know, it's a perfect mix in my house because my wife doesn't like sports, doesn't know anything about sports. Yep. She walks into a room, sees me watching sports, she walks right out. Last night, she walked into the living room. I got my son sitting on the couch with me. We're watching uh, LSU in Iowa, and my wife like had to do a double take. She goes, are you watching women's basketball? I go, yeah. this is one of the biggest games right. of the right. year in any sport. Right. It doesn't right. matter who – women, right. men, doesn't matter. Right. Dog sledding, it doesn't matter. Right. Like, this, this is a right. huge matchup. And to be honest, I'm looking forward to the next game after this because I want to yeah. watch UConn oh, yeah. and USC. Yes. Perk, look what's happened. And this is great. First off, it's great for the sport. It's yep. awesome for women's basketball in general. But this has been fun. I honestly think, I'm going to have to say this and then run away. I honestly think the women's tournament might be more exciting right now than the men's tournament. Okay, you're with me there, right? I agree. I, yep. Look, undefeated South Carolina, right. NC State is like this dream team that, you know, comes out of nowhere, but they've beaten a lot of good teams by a large margin. Uh, UConn with Paige Beckers and then Iowa here with Caitlin Clark. It, right. it is a star-studded, story-filled women's Final Four. I, I I think it is better than the men's. That's with all due respect to the men, which you don't usually say that, right? It's usually right. the other way around. With all due respect to the men, the women have you beat. Sorry. Yeah, 100%. And you know what? This yeah. has a lot to – not like you said, like we're, we're going right into the ditch, and I'm okay with that because me and you – this is what happens when we talk. Uh, we're going to do an entire episode. We're not going to talk Dolphins for one second at the end of this. Uh, but this is what, honestly, Perk, this is what college basketball for men was 15, right. 20 years ago. Right. When you got to the Final Four and you saw, like, the Duke team with all the stars or North right. Carolina with all the stars, the one team making a run but still has the star guy. You don't yeah. have that really in men's college basketball anymore where you have these, these superstar named players but in women's basketball right now, you have plenty, and you're right. That's why this is – I think it's more It's more exciting to watch. I'm more excited to watch those games last night and coming up for the Final Four than I am for the men's. I really am. Yeah, and, and you got Juju Watkins coming up at USC to right. take over when Caitlin Clark is gone. And, and right. uh, the, the uh, Johnson girl at, at LSU, who is the right. sophomore. I mean, it's – women's basketball is in really really great hands man it's it's and i i don't i don't watch women's basketball no, um, me either. I, i'm not a fan you know i know some of the names and i don't watch wnba but this rematch this matchup last night what a i mean an incredible statement all right yeah. all right, right, right. <laughs> and that's great. our podcast for today thanks <laughs> Kirk. uh we'll talk <laughs> dolphins next time right like i think we can end it right there no, but that you know, honestly, it's just fun. I know I've known Perk for a million years, and I tell you all the time. But like yeah. we talk sports, and this is just a huge thing going on right now in the sports world, and great for women's sports in general. Just yeah. in general, this is good for it. But anyways, let's talk some dolphin stuff. Um, I haven't talked to you since a lot of the moves have been made on this yeah. team. So let's start with a couple of the basic things. Obviously, I know the Christian Wilkins story overpay. You know, not overpaid, but paid a lot more to go yeah. out to Vegas. But you're not. I know the Dolphins can't replace. Christian Wilkins they can't replace him in general but man bring in four or five like kind of just guys 
that's not a good replacement either, is it? Like they need some more help there at that defensive tackle position, you think? They do. They do. And and here's here's a here's a big thing at that defensive on the defensive line, Zach, that Zach Sealer is coming back and he is very effective, um, kind of a borderline Pro Bowl player. But that was when you had Christian Wilkins beside you and you were flanked by Bradley Chubb and Jalen Phillips. For the early part of the season, you know, there's Wilkins won't be there. And then you figure Chubb and Phillips, you know, who knows where they'll be for the opener of the first couple of weeks. If I'm the offense, the opposing offense, I'm double teaming Zach Sealer and I'll let everybody else do whatever they want one on one. But we are stopping Zach Sealer. Right. And so then I wonder about the efficiency of the of the defensive line, the pass rush, the push that you're going to get from up front. They signed Shaq Barrett. Yeah, that that's good. I mean, that's good, but that's not, you know, that's uh, quite honestly at, at this level of his career, he's probably at the Van Ginkle level, right. you know. Um, and so, that, you know, that's good, but that's not going to scare anybody. Um, I like what they did um, at the cornerback position. Well, let's go to, to linebacker. We'll just stick with the right, front yeah, seven sure. yep. uh, because I, I like what they did there at, at, at linebacker. Uh, Jordan Brooks is a baller. You know, this is a guy who is a tackling machine. So uh, I think that you have done a very good job there. He comes over from Seattle. Um, and a young dude the- also. I, I was surprised to see he was like a young, like when they yep. signed him. I was, I was I was thinking maybe 29, 30, 31. Like, I wasn't even thinking straight. Then I saw his age. I'm like, that's a pretty good signing for a young right. kid, right? Under 30, yeah. I think he's yeah. 28, if I'm not right. mistaken. 27, 28. So, yeah, that's a, that's a good acquisition. Um, on the corner, I like the Kendall Fuller acquisition. Me too. Uh, that's not, he's not Xavier Howard, but that's a good a- a- acquisition. I like Jordan Poyer uh, replacing uh, Deshaun Elliott because the Poyer-Javon Holland pairing is very good. So, now in the secondary – you know, you look, you've got um, you've got Jalen Ramsey, Kendall Fuller, you've got Cater Kohu, you've got Nick Needham coming back also. Uh, so you're you're doing OK there at the cornerback position. The two safeties, you're doing pretty good. You don't have much depth. Right. So the, the secondary, I think you're good. The front seven, I worry about. I, I, I do worry about that. And even when Chubb and Jalen Phillips come back. Who knows if they are both going to get to 100%. Who knows when they both get to 100%. And I keep going back to this, Zach. With this team, every game counts because this team needs home field advantage in the playoffs. And so all of these games that, you know, well, okay, Tennessee, okay, we gave that one away, or Philly, or Kansas City, or Buffalo, we're trying to get home field or or that first playoff game at home. So, right. you know, the Chubb and Phillips absences for every game that they're not there, that's going to be significant. And so you've got to replace them. And so um, in short, Zach, I, I think that they've had a, the Dolphins have had a good plan to make up for their free agent losses. I like what they've done. Is it enough to win a playoff game? I'm not sure. I, I'm, I'm going to have to see them out there in action. But I do like the the plan that they had and the way they executed the plan. Right. The two perfect transitions from what you were talking about that I'll go to real quick. Um, Andrew Van Ginkle obviously go, goes up Minnesota. He's in Minnesota now. Right. Um, it was a difference of two or three million dollars a year. Was that what it was between yeah. Chapman? Yeah. Would you have pulled the trigger if you're Chris Greer and, and brought Van Ginkle back knowing what you have with him and, and his age? Or do you think it was a good move bringing Shaq Barrett in and letting Van Ginkle go? I, I think this really gets to Van Ginkle's injury, which I believe okay. is a Liz Frank fracture in the okay. foot. And so, I, you know, how does he recover from that? You know, I think that might have been a factor in the Dolphins' decision. Uh, you know, who knows what he's going to look like and and uh, when he's going to return. And and so, you know, you, you, you're you already going to have those questions with, with uh, Chubb right. and Phillips, I, you know, maybe. But, yeah, I, you know, other than that, um, you know, I understand Van Ginkle going to get the money because that's a lot of money. Of but for the Dolphins, yeah, that's really not a lot of money. However, in the situation that you're in, that could be another starter. That could be another Eli Apple level player, which I, I you know, <laughs> it's not a great name to bring up. Uh, Eichenberg <laughs> level player, uh, Isaiah right, right. Wynn. Am I there climbing a Braxton Berrios? <laughs> <laughs> right. You did you good. The you went, you climbed a ladder. You're doing really good there. Well, that was well done by you. Right, right, right. right. Uh, so, so that is potentially another starter if you're talking two or three million dollars a year. And, and that was probably a factor in it also. But yeah, I would, 
I, I was a little surprised that given the situation with Chubb and Phillips that the Dolphins didn't jump a little bit higher to keep Van Ginkle. Yeah, and, but it makes perfect sense with the Liz Frank. You don't want to bring right. another guy in that you don't know if he's going to be 100% right. by the time. And Jack Barrett, listen, I get it with the age. I get he's right. older, but maybe he's got a little bit more to prove, a little bit gas in the tank. I don't think this is the Mario Williams coming down for, like Joe used to call it, the 401k years. Right, right. Come down for the two-year $20 million deal. Right. You really don't play, really don't care, but you're excited to retire after another $20 million in the bank. I don't think that was Shaq Barrett. I think he actually has a little bit of a chip on his shoulder, which at that point – I think is good for the Dolphins because Shaq's going to have every rep he wants in OTAs, training camps, and everything in the beginning beginning of the season because he'll be the only healthy guy with the name right. on that defensive or the edge rusher uh, position at that point. Um, I like Mike McDaniel's comments a little bit when it came to the the two injured guys when it came to Jalen Phillips and Brand mm-hmm. and Chubb because. It's the same thing, and he said it also, what he said with Jalen Ramsey. There's no timetable. When he's ready, he's ready, and that's it. I, I'm happy with what he said, but it's also very kind of in the back of my head, well, wait a minute. That kind of scares me a little bit too because if they were way ahead of schedule, I think Mike would have beaten his chest and talked about it and said, oh, you don't think he's going to be back till November? Just wait and see. So I'm a little bit skeptical and a little nervous about that, but his comments I thought were good. What would you think about those comments and – how he's kind of positioning that because he had a tough one with Jalen Ramsey also last year. Everyone was looking forward to week one of last season, having Ramsey and Xavier out there and seeing what the defense was like. We didn't see Jalen until what November at that point or whatever it was. I hope it's not the same situation with those two guys, but I have the feeling it might be. Well, you know, Zach, um, Mike McDaniel kind of played both sides of the fence because he did say that they had to kick Jalen Phillips and Bradley Chubb out of the out of the facility for like <laughs> a week because they like were like living there. Right. But right. he also said we're going to take our time. I think taking their time is the biggest takeaway because they learned their lesson last year with Connor Williams. Right. Remember, they right. brought him back too early. Way he too ended early. up getting injured again. And so after that. They seem to be pretty patient with with everybody as they were coming back. Rob Hunt being a prime example of he probably could have come back a week, maybe two weeks earlier. But they were like, no, no, you know, we want to make sure that we have him for the playoffs and and for the for the December playoff run. Right. And so I really think that that's kind of the big picture here with Chubb and Phillips is that. We want to have them for December and January. And, you know, they'll get them back by right. right. Oh, of then. course. But, right, right, right. you know, the big picture is if, if they're if we can bring them back in October and they're 98 percent, as opposed to bringing them back in September when they're 88 percent. Well, let's wait. You know, let's wait till October. I think that's kind of the the, the guiding light here. Um you know, remember, Zach, the, the clock is ticking on this team. And so oh, yeah. as, as much, you know, as much as we talk about Jalen Phillips, well, uh, you know, he's coming up on, on the fourth year and, and you got the fifth year option with him. Um, the same thing with Jalen Waddle. Javon Holland was not a first round pick. Right. You have no fifth year option. So this is it for him. And Jordan Poyer is on a one year deal, if I'm not mistaken. So you could be starting over with the safeties. And so that just kind of drives it home again it's imperative to win every year with this team last year was the two year that you had the most talent right when when you did have uh Tyreek and Tehran and Jalen Ramsey and Tua and X and and Jerome Baker and Christian right. Wilkins and you know you had all of that talent now that talent is starting to to, to chip away you know and and so what's going to happen and, and and it's not only the players that it, it's also your coaches remember your two coordinators have interviewed for head coaching jobs, right. right? Frank Smith and Anthony Weaver. So if you have a good year this year and don't get it done, like get to the AFC championship, well, one of those guys, you could do well enough that one of those guys gets a head coaching job and now you have to start over on the coaching staff. So winning is imperative for this team this year for a lot of reasons. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you. And the whole window is kind of closing argument is there because – I think for listen, I'm I'm going to be 45 years old. I've followed this Dolphins team since I was a kid. Yeah. Obviously, working in the media for the last 21 years, I've covered the team now. I hadn't seen top to bottom a, a more talented roster. I think than last year this team had. I mean, maybe we we could go back to some of the JT Zach years and see how the right. offense was when Ricky was there. like. Maybe right. it's possible there was right. there was a, a better balance there where the defense was just 
number like two in the in the in the NFL and the offense was teetering in the top 15 or whatever. But man, last year, I don't want to say the windows closed because that's not fair to this team right now. But man, I feel like it's one of those old school roll up windows and my grandma's doing it and it's slow, but it's getting there. It's it's, it's getting right. there. And this right. and by the end of this by this time next year, if we're not talking about like you said, AFC championship or possibly Super Bowl or something like that. I feel like my grandma by then is going to have that window closed, and I'm scared because of what this team has tried to do and this rebuild and Chris Greer's tenure here as trying to rebuild this team hasn't gotten a playoff win even with that roster last year. That's scary. It is. It is. And look, I'll say this again, Zach. I am 100% for this plan, for this all-in, push right. your chips through the middle of the table, whatever cliche you want to put out there. I'm all for it. They just didn't execute on the field. Um, Brandon Shore did a great job with the money, fitting sure all did. those guys in under the salary cap last year. That was brilliant. Right. Chris Greer did a great job signing that talent and accumulating it. You know, Mike McDaniel, the execution on the field, it, it didn't really go the way it needed to. And I know injuries were a factor. Right. But again, you know, this is where winning every game matters because I know you blew the Tennessee game. And then after that, you had a bunch of injuries. But that's why you have to beat Buffalo up there. Uh, that's why you have to beat Kansas City in Germany. That's why you have to beat Philly in Philly. I know there was that 10-0 penalty deficit. Right. You got to win all of the one of these games because any one of them, instead of going to Kansas City for the playoff game in frigid conditions, maybe you were here hosting Pittsburgh in, right. in 75 degrees. Right. I mean, so that's that's why all of these games matter, and that's why it matters if Chubb and Phillips aren't there in September. Well, now what are you going to do? By the way, um, I'll say this, Zach, uh, that, that I am excited to see because to me, you know, your incoming talent is not as good as your outgoing talent at right. this point. We'll see what happens the rest of free agency in the draft. So we know that your outgoing talent didn't even win you a playoff game, right? So your right. incoming talent has to be far superior or you can deploy your talent differently. And so on that note, I'm excited to see Anthony Weaver, right? right. He says he's going to use Jalen Ramsey as a chess piece. I'm excited for that. Let's see what they do with John New Smith offensively. If he's the third, you know, the third down guy, the third receiver, the number three. Uh, let's see if they throw to Braxton Berrios a little bit more. Let's see if they run the ball a little bit more. A-Chan, let's see if he can stay healthy and provide some, some more support for Raheem Mostert. Um, let, let's see if you call it differently on the goal line. Get a power running back. Uh, third and ones might be so use your talent differently Zach it's you're not going to have superior talent right. but you can use that talent differently maybe you blitz more Anthony Weaver you know uh, um, Xavier Howard talked a lot about the Dolphins played a lot of man, uh, zone a lot of soft zone and he's used to playing man Jalen How Jalen Ramsey wants to play man so maybe Anthony Weaver does that use your talent differently maybe instead of sitting back against Will Levis last season as he's picking right. you apart maybe Maybe you blitz them a little bit more, right. Anthony Weaver. So use your talent differently. So just because I don't think the Dolphins have as much talent, it doesn't mean they can't get a better outcome from the season, Zach. I, I totally agree with that because I thought that what hurt the most after kind of the, the X situation and we found out that he was you know going to be cut, we all kind of knew in the back of our heads could be a cap casualty at the end yeah. of the season, whatever, was Jalen Ramsey's post about like they never really got to see – the two of us play man, like they never got to see it. And I thought to myself, man, I'm like, Vic Fangio is a pretty smart guy. He, you know, he's been around the league for a long time. He knows talent when he sees it. How do you not deploy those two guys in that situation where you have two of the best man to man cover corners in the league on your team? Maybe the best in Jalen Ramsey and X couple of years past where maybe he was the number two or three guy, right. but you got two top five guys in that position and you're playing them. Like you got two slow guys or two fat guys out there that can't cover and you have to just, you know what I mean? Like you have the talent. It was there. Like you got to make sure you use it. So I think you're right. I think if Anthony Weaver comes in here and looks at this team and says, okay, we're not really good here, but this could help here. We're yeah. really good back there. Mm -hmm. We have two unbelievable players back there in Ramsey and Holland that we need to use in specific roles. Yeah. And now Poyer came out of nowhere for this right. deal. Like, you're right. I think the strength of that defense, obviously, is the secondary now. Yeah. He's going to use it to his advantage like that. And if he can get anything out of that front of seven, like you said, right. especially with those linebackers, 
and the injured guys coming back, I think the defense right. is going to be pretty good. I don't think that all of a sudden they're going to fall off a cliff and be, you know, number 20 in the league, ne- you know, right. next year. And, and the offensively too, I loved what you wrote and, or, and talked about with Mike McDaniel about play calling. And I love the fact that I saw quotes from other guys that do it around the league right. and how tough it is and the preparation for it. And for a first time play caller, but a guy that's drew up the plays and put the plays together now has to call the plays. It's tough. I hope Mike McDaniel sits back in his chair, talks to the people around him and makes a plan a little bit better than sitting himself in a room by himself right. and trying to put this together. I thought that article was great. I thought it was because I think it needs to hit like that. I think Mike McDaniel needs to think more also because I do think he is an offensive genius, but when there's too much on his plate, all of a sudden everything just drops off a little bit. And if that happens, like we've seen the last two years, all of a sudden I thought, and, and I'll, I'm cutting myself off here. It's like I'm two people talking. I thought, the two two seasons ago, when they went to California and they lost those two games, and it looked like when the, when the Niners and the Chargers kind of figured them out, right. dropped the linebacker a little bit more, brought the safety up a little bit more, right. it changed everything for Mike McDaniel's offense. Even last year, where they had a great start and everything, it just changed everything. He needs to look at that and change more like that. And I thought your article was great on that. Your thoughts on that and what Mike McDaniel needs to do going forward to make this team better. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, the, the the article, you know, I talked to two uh, head coaches who called plays right. and who have been to the Super Bowl. Zach Johnson from from um, from Tennessee and Andy Reid from Kansas City. And really, one of the the biggest takeaway to me from from both of those guys was um, during the week you need to kind of lighten your load, you know, and 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 you you need to kind of delegate and and give more stuff to the assistants. And, and Zach, Zach was saying that, you know, the, the biggest thing is when the other coaches have to wait on you to right. get the offensive game plan because you're the head coach and you have your hand so many places. And these guys are, are trying to get the offensive game plan, but you have to take care of these free agents, you know, or or whatever, the, the injuries on special teams and, and the offense is waiting and and now they get the game plan later. They get, you get to it and you're only 90% there because you've got to put out this fire over here, right. delegate, you know, spread that stuff out. And it helps you on game day. It helps you keep your mind a little more clear on being able to focus more on calling plays because you know Frank Smith is, is handling this and the tight ends coach John Embry is who is an assistant head coach is handling this and the running backs coach Eric Studisville who is an assistant head coach who is an interim head coach in Denver he right. can handle this you know you've got Daryl Bevel your quarterbacks coach you know he's interviewed for head coaching jobs so you've got a talent rich staff kind of spread some stuff out. And and I know Mike McDaniel, you know, he is the play caller. He's the architect. By the way, he should be the play caller. He should right. not relinquish play calling. I agree. He's, I agree. He's brilliant. But, he, he you know, he's young. And and so he needs to take some plate, some stuff off of his plate, as you said. And to me, that was the biggest takeaway uh, when I talked to these guys at the NFL owners meetings up in Orlando. I had my Orlando time. Right, right. Uh, but yeah, that was that was the biggest takeaway to me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was there at the same time. And literally when I was like reading everyone's notes, I'm like, I am down the street from all of this. I just yep. want to just walk over there like a, a random person, <laughs> see what's going on. Like it was pretty crazy. But I loved it because I think Mike's, you know, listen. Mike got the first time head coaching gig. He did the, the perfect thing when he got on the plane and, and FaceTime to uh yep. yep. and it was a it was a perfect start for him down here. Then the team started playing good. Then Ty or Tyreek Hill came and the team started playing good. Jalen Ramsey the next year. Like yep. everything is put in place. I was a Chris, I was a fire Chris Greer guy a couple of years ago because I just couldn't believe that 2020 draft when it was Noah Igbenogany and Austin Jackson right. that wasn't playing. We couldn't find a position for him. There was no answer on two except Ryan Fitzpatrick's here. I was like, God, this is, this is, it's ruined after one year. It's ruined. I turned a corner on Chris Greer because what I think he's done is said, okay, I can't draft every great player. So if there's a great player there and number 17 is there for me to trade for him or 22 or a second round pick, I got to, I got to get talent. I got to bring talent in here. So I'm good with that. I'm all, I'm with you on on the train of well, let's all in, push it all in, let's win, yeah. and then let's worry about it afterwards. Let's let's right. let's let Brandon Shore and Chris Greer sit in a room right. in a year and go, oh my God, what are we going to do now? I don't know, but this Super Bowl ring looks really nice as we're yeah. getting ready to right. cut players and redo this roster. Right. Give me that, like like any. I don't think any fan would say no to that. Saying, listen, we're going to have a really good year. We're going to win the Super Bowl. 
But then we're going to have three or four years where we're trying to get back. And it could be two years. It could be a year and a half or it could be four. So just, are you good with that fan base? Yes. Does that mean a parade from Orlando to Cuba? Yes. We'll take that because that's how long the parade is going to be if if they win the Super Bowl. So I'm good with that. So let's like, I'm fine. Get there, get there and do it. So Mike McDaniel to me, going back to let him call the plays, let him be the head coach. He seems like he knows what he's doing. I just think like you said in the article and like when you talk to the other guys, just delegate, like you said, just make sure you have, you have the help there. Use it. It's, a, right. you know, like use everything around you, all your resources there. Okay. That was yeah. fantastic. And, and let me, and yeah, let me say this, yeah. Zach, uh, to your point of just, just build it and win. You look at the LA Rams and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, right? You right. get Matt Stafford and Tom Brady. And in the time that they have built those up and won, they both went to the playoffs last year. Right. Tampa won a playoff game. Right. I mean, they beat Philly, so it can be done quickly. And both of them did that all in. Let's get Stafford. Let's get Brady. It, it worked. They won the Super Bowl. They tore it down. And both of them already back in the playoffs. So it, it can happen. Absolutely. And if you get a – and if two is the guy and the guy going forward, you have him here. So it's not like you have to right. get rid of him on, to on change a rookie things. Deal. Right. Like, right. Yeah, so, right. like – do what you have to do right, at this point, right. because you said it earlier, and it's going to be the elephant in the room when the season starts. You got three guys, the core young guys right. on this team that all need new contracts. Right. Even though Jalen Phillips coming off an injury, you got to pay the guy. Yep. Jalen Waddle, you want to make sure he's happy because Tyreek's making 30 million yep. a year. He's going to want to get up there. Yep. And Holland to me yep. is the enigma. If you don't bring him back in, if you don't get him to resign here, you're in deep trouble in that secondary because Ramsey's going to get older. Guys yeah. are going to get older. You need that star back there in, in Javon Holland. So yeah. you're right. And, this and, is going to be an interesting yeah. season in, in general. And, Zach, and, and, and you would hate to lose all of them for oh, nothing, right? Like right. Wilkins and oh. Xavier Howard and Jerome Baker and Van Gink. Like all this talent that just you drafted and walked out the door, Brandon Jones. Like Ugh. all of these guys that you drafted, they just walked out the door and you don't even have a playoff victory to show for. Good draft right. picks. They went to Dolphins University and now they're going to go somewhere else and excel. Right, that it's horrible to see that. I right. hate to see that. Right, in, exactly. and now and now you got three like potential yeah. superstars that you right. need to take care of as right. the core of your team for the next five to eight years. So you better make sure right. that they're happy, and you don't wait till the last second with these guys also, because you can't wait till the last second with Javon Holland. Right. Javon Holland walk right out that door and not right. care and sign with another team for big money. The other two guys, like you said, have options. All right, yeah. last two things we'll get to. It's draft month. Fins yes. at twenty one. Fins at fifty five. The Chris Perkins draft strategy, best player available, position in need, trade up or down. Let's get this thing rolling. What do you think is going to happen at 20? We are still a couple weeks away. Yeah. And all the smoke screens are going to start to come up now. All the big lies are going to come out now. All the uh, over evaluations of guys off the field are going to come out now. But at 21, what does Chris Perkins do for this Dolphins team? My mock draft came out yesterday. I had the Dolphins taking, boy, I, I butchered this guy's name. I Le-Atsu saw it. I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> yes, the, the, I, I think I butchered his name. The, the edge rusher from U- UCLA. Yes, oh, great. Uh, yeah, so he is, he's basically, um, you know, he's he's built like, uh, he's a slender defensive end. I, can I say that he's built like Jason Taylor? That's just too much, right? Built, no, built is right, fine. Right, Don't say he plays built. like or <laughs> looks like. <laughs> he's built. built. He's a right. tall, He's skinny guy. Exactly. That's right, right. Thank right. you. Thank you. You know <laughs> what I mean. Right. So, uh, yes, he's a he's a slender pass rusher, but he can get to the quarterback. Um, here's the deal, though. You know, I, if, if the Dolphins want to trade out of the first round, they could probably get a second and third round pick, not trade down, trade out. out. And so that would give you two seconds and a third in the first. Um, let's see. They're. Their uh their their second round pick is 51. 55. Is it 55? 55, I think? 55, yeah, 55, right, 55. Right. 55. And so then you would probably get something like in the 70s, right? Like maybe the mid 70s. So that would be the three picks in the top 78, 75. I, I think you could do pretty good. This is a draft that has a lot of stuff that the Dolphins need as far as offensive line, right. edge rushers. Um uh, you know, in interior offensive line and uh, and offensive tackle, edge rushers. Um, there's some cornerbacks if you wanted to go that route. You know, so so I could see them trading out of the first round, but I do think Latu would be a tremendous yep. draft pick because 
You do need that push up front. So he could team with Shaq Barrett. Those, there's no pressure to get Chubb and Phillips back. He would both be filling a need and getting a best player available. And we don't know how Jalen Phillips is going to look uh, right. once he comes back from that Achilles. We don't know if they're going to want to sign Jalen Phillips to the fifth year option. I'm not trying to be grim. I'm trying right. to be a realist, trying to look out for the business. So if you have Latu in there, that kind of gets you moving down that track along those same lines. Maybe you start to, well, you've got to think that way about Ron Armstead. So right. I don't know if right. that's a second round pick or a first round pick that you kind of plan for that. The 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 thing is, if you if you went with the Teron Armstead offensive line replacement in the first round, you could play the guy inside at guard probably until, you know, and then when when needed this season, you kick him out to tackle. And when Teron probably retires after the season, you've already got that guy there. So that's a that's another way to look at it. The Here's Laramie the Tunsil way. way. They, they they were gonna they did that with Laramie Tunsil until they got right, rid of him. Right. So exactly. That, I'm I'm perfectly fine with that. There's a great Tackle at 21 yep. or, or edge rusher. I'm good with either one of those at 21. Yep. Right. Yep. And and there's another way uh, that I'm, that I'm looking at this and that I did look at it when I did my mock draft, Zach, I didn't expect the dolphins to take Devon HN last year. Right. To me, that was a complete surprise because right. I was like, well, you've got Mostert and Jeff Wilson and you had some, uh, uh, Savon Ahmed also. And I was like, why are you taking a running back? But the Mike McDaniel offense thing. So I, if there's a receiver there, I knew would, it. Would, yep. yeah, would you take one of the kids from Texas, you know, sure. the, the, a Donnie Johnson or Xavier Worthy, or would would you take um the 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 Lad McConkey kid from from Georgia, who I really really like. Right. That kid is really good. He would be a good slot receiver, good return guy, but it's kind of an upgrade on Barrio. So right. I, I don't eliminate kind of the the tight end wide receiver pick also in the first round because, you know, McDaniel loves offense. So that's kind of, you know, I would take Latu the edge rusher or I could take an offensive lineman. I could trade out or I could see them taking a receiver. I know that's a lot of stuff, but I, no, I, I like right. Latu the edge rusher. Yeah, me too. No, look, I, I saw it and I saw your mock and I, and I loved it because I think the edge rusher needs to be, unfortunately, because if these two guys were healthy, it wouldn't be a, something you have to right. worry about. But unfortunately, it's a need position right. right away, not, hey, down the road. It's a need right. position day one when the season starts. You need to have two edge rushers out there, so you yep. need to have a guy. And like you said, maybe – it. listen, I don't think it ever hurts a team to have three or four good edge rushers in a right. rotation. Right. And young guys, and they're also – Chubb's not going to be playing for 10 more years, right. so right. you have to worry about that also. But the Teron Armstead thing to me is something you need to handle immediately also. If it's not a 21, like you said – it's got to be at 55 right. where you take right. an offensive tackle. Right. When the first two picks are in for the Dolphins, I don't think any Dolphin fan would be upset if it was left tackle or, or right tackle, left tackle, and an edge rusher at those two spots right there. But I do think you're right. If, the, if somehow the draft, and you know how these things get, right now it's three quarterbacks in like the top four or five picks, right. probably no matter what. It might be six quarterbacks in the top 18. Like you never know what might happen where teams right. get nervous. Right. I want that to happen so these guys that could be top five to eight picks now are available at 17 because right. quarterbacks are running off the board or all of a sudden everyone's worried about that the left tackle right. and they pick five or six left tackles. Because, right. listen, my dream scenario for this offense, the way I look at it Madden style, yep. I love John U. Smith. I've been waiting for a tight end that could catch in the red zone and be a threat forever. But let me tell you, if somehow, some way, that Brock Bowers kid's there at 21 <laughs> – there you go. Her, there you I'm going to run to the stage yep. without yep. Greer oh. and Stephen Ross knowing, and yep. I'm going to hand the ticket in, and I'm going to announce the pick. Yep. I don't know if this kid is the next Gronk, if it's the next Jimmy Gronk. I don't know, right. but if there's a shot, and yep. he could be there, and yep. you could just – you don't have to worry about that third wide receiver as right. much. If you've got John New and Brock Bowers, yep. I mean, don't Perk. Do. Don't right. do. If he's don't there – if right. he's there, I don't want to right. trade up for him. I don't want to trade to right. 14 Correct. and give up other picks. Right. But if Chris Greer's sitting in his chair at 20 and all of a sudden he sees Bauer sitting there and maybe that left tackle he like just got picked, yep. maybe you know one of those defensive the edge rushers, a couple of them are off the board and maybe there's a couple left, but they're really maybe second round picks. I wouldn't hesitate for a second to upgrade that offense. If you can have one side of your team, not one side because your special teams also, but offensive or defensively, one side elite and the other side pretty good, you yeah. can win a Super Bowl. If you can right. add an elite player to right. that offense again, right. 
right. like you said with Achan last year. There's no yep. chance I would have thought they were right. going to add a speedy running back to this team. What right. the hell did they need a speedy running back for? Right. Well, I saw the kid play, and I'm glad they drafted him. Yep. If ba- and I don't want Bowers going to the Jets or the Patriots or the Bills. <laughs> right. I don't need any of that happening. Right. But, but that'd be a, a nice coup if all of a sudden 21 comes around. And like you said, you get one of those stud wide receivers or tight ends. I wouldn't be upset at all. No, no. And, and, and you know, that's, you know, that's what Mike McDaniel does. So, I know. you know, it. I, I wouldn't be mad. I wouldn't be I wouldn't mad. Be mad. I mean, they, they got lucky with Tunsil, right? Right. I mean, listen, yeah. if it wasn't for a gas mask bong, we wouldn't right. have half this team right now right. Right. with exactly. all these draft picks and these trades that we made. So, exactly. all right, let's end with this. June 1st, uh, obviously going to be a big day for this Dolphins team yeah. and, and around the league because there'll be some cuts, there'll be players available. Um, so the Odell Beckham thing kind of, I don't know if it's like a fart in the wind and it kind of went away or if it's still there. Yeah. But what do you expect this team to do uh, June 1st. I know you can't, we can't name players because we have no idea who's going to be cut right. at this point or, you know, June 1st designations outside of what we know down here. But do you expect them to kind of be really up there signing guys, grabbing guys June 1st, knowing they're going to have a couple extra dollars also to spend? Well, it depends on Tua's contract, right? Depends right. on his extension. Good point. So, Very good point. I, look, you know, I, I don't think Tua should get an extension. I think he should play on the fifth year option. I've said that. Right. But if you want to use that money to sign Odell Beckham and then give Tua his extension, okay, that's fine. Right, right. You know, that's you know that's fine. That's good use of the money. Right. Um, that's fine with me. Uh, again, I wouldn't extend Tua, but I understand how the organization looks at this. He he's Mike McDaniel's guy. They've worked with him. They've improved him. He's a Pro Bowl quarterback. You know, I, I wouldn't be mad. Right. Aside from that. Um, yeah, I, I guess you would just kind of do the piecemeal thing and, and see who's out there. And, and look, you, you could save some money for the trade deadline, right? Because right. they did get Bradley Chubb and, and Jeff Wilson at the trade deadline two years ago. So you could you could save some money for that also. Um, you know you're going to have some injuries. That's the way this team right. is. They also, two years ago, remember, they took a swing and a miss on Eric Fisher. You right. know, paid him, paid him like $3 million. He went Another. out to California with him, right. never played a down. Right. But you had the money available. So yeah. I, I think with, you know, Tehran's injury history and Chubb's injury history, remember, this is Chubb's second ACL of his career. Yes. So, um, you know, Jalen's coming off of a – Phillips coming off of a major injury. It would it would be wise just to allocate so, some just-in-case money. Right. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't – I honestly don't know what they'll do with it. But I could see – it going to OBJ and two of the majority of it. Yeah, it'd be fun. Listen, at that point, like I said, if we could try to make one side elite and, and top two or three in the right. league, I'm fine with that knowing that the other side's not terrible. It's not like right. one side's going to give up, you know, the defense's not going to give up 50 points a game and the offense is not going to have to score 60. I get that. I, I get that. Right. But if, man, one side could be that dominant force and the other side just needs to hold their breath and make sure that they hold it down with Anthony Weaver on defensive end, and on defensive side, and I'm, and, I, and I'm actually not even giving Anthony Weaver enough credit because I'm, I don't even know what his defense is going to look like. Right. I have no idea right. what he's going to do yet. Yet I'm still saying, God, I hope the offense is better than the defense. Just give me something at the beginning of the year that know that I'm okay here. Yeah, we could get better here, but we're really good in this spot. And hopefully that's offense. You put up points in this league, you have a good shot of winning. You know, like we've seen that over the years. Yeah, defense wins championships. I know that motto. But man, if you could put up 35 points a game, teams are going to have a tough time beating you. Yeah, yeah. And look, Zach, and, and, and I've said this before too, you know, Vic Fangio did have the number 10 defense in the league last right. year, missing Jalen Ramsey for seven games. Uh, I think Ramsey and X only played five games together, if I'm Jeez. not mistaken. And then the last four games, you had that hodgepodge without Chubb, without Phillips, without Van Ginkle, you know. Uh, so, uh, you know, you can say what you want about Fangio and not using Ramsey correctly and not blitzing enough and playing a zone. Dude, you had the number 10 defense and you didn't have Jalen Ramsey for a lot of the time right. in the last, yeah, the last few games, you know, you who knows who is rushing the passer out there. I, so. I still have no idea. Right. right. Exactly. Right. exactly. So we do have to tip our hats to Vic Fangio. I just wanted to say that. Yep. You know, I agree. I agree. I yeah. mean, you have a, any team that could add Jalen Ramsey to a top 10 defense midseason, you right. think at that point you're going to be really good at right. the end of right. the season. Right, exactly. Then and there. All right, Perk, we're in draft month. We'll talk to you again soon. Uh, where's everyone going to see your stuff? And when's the deep dive coming back? Is it next week? 
Uh, Deep Dive's coming back next week with okay. a draft preview, and we'll be back the following week with a draft wrap-up. And so, um, yeah, so that's that's kind of what we're doing, our draft preview right now series. Uh, have quarterbacks yesterday, got running backs today. So uh, keep up with that. And and uh, a word, Vontae Davis, you know. I uh, know. You, I was, you knew him. I knew yeah. him. Very oh. He always had that big smile in the locker always. room. So. Uh, you know, a, a heartfelt. Um, I'm sorry to your family, and uh, yeah, that's. But but uh, Vontae, what a, what a, a, a good guy, Zach. You knew he was. He's yep. always upbeat and always a lot of fun. So uh, yeah, so uh, I had to see that. Sad no, no, that. horrible to see a guy 35 yeah. years old. Yeah, I mean, so young. I mean, God, 35 to me years ago was such an old man. That guy's right. 35. He's an old man, and now I'm 45, seeing a 35 year old and yeah. going, goodness gracious, just way too soon for a guy like that. And like you said. Always smiling. Yep. Unfortunately, well known throughout the country for want to call my grandma, and that's right. so terrible because Jeff right. Ireland was such a pos. Yep. Uh, that's me saying that now. No one else on the podcast. I'm the one who said that. Uh, but Vontae was just he was a, he was a fun guy to be he around was. and a he good was. player. And a yeah. lot of people did. Yeah. when him yeah. and Sean Smith were drafted together. Yes. I thought it was the new Pat and Sam. I was that's one of the. I was, it was like, we got it. We did it again. We got Pat and Sam. This is yep. going to be great. Yeah, so so big thoughts and prayers out to everyone in that Davis family. What a terrible day it was for that whole family yesterday. Uh, yep. Perk, never a terrible day talking to you. No. Always great talking to yep. you about everything. We'll catch you again before the draft. Maybe we'll do a little after draft, too. And then do you take time off, or is NFL guys don't get time off anymore? What, what happens? Well, you know, the, the time off that we get is um, after mini camp and before training camp. So it's like mid-June to, to, you know, you get like a four-week window mid-June right. to mid-August. And that's our time off of it because, you know, right after the draft, you're going to have the um, OTA. Right. And yeah, yep. So right. it just keeps going, baby. Hey, that, the, the Dolphins keep us relevant. So I get God it. bless them. Right. I, I need to come up. Maybe me and you need to come up on the side of like a NFL reporter summer camp for like three weeks. We'll like rent a space. Oh, so yeah. All the reporters can just be oh, like, yeah. all right. I want to get away from everything in the world. We're right. going to camp up in the up in, up in the Catskills. Right. Right. Uh, it's going to be nice right. in upstate New York. I right. think we should come up with like a reporter NFL like l getaway for like two and a half weeks. I think we make okay. a lot of money, Perk. I'm just well, look, we, we, you know what? We're in Florida. We have to do it in the Everglades, right? And be tough, like like kind of like a naked right. and afraid sports writer style. <laughs> like you get to catch pythons and alligators. Right. Yeah, there you go. Right, right. We'll spend a day at the Miami Zoo. Whatever you want right. to do, all that stuff. Uh, Perk, me and you are geniuses. We are geniuses. We are Let's do it, baby. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Chris Perkins from the uh, South Florida Sun Sentinel, my guy for a million years at this uh, point. Thanks for coming on Crancis Corner as always. Always, Zach. Always. Catch all the stuff on Sun Sentinel, SunSentinel.com. The deep dive, like you said, uh, they do a great job on that podcast, getting you all ready for Dolphin season. My man, Chris Perkins here on Crancis Corner.